What's happening ladies and gentlemen, it's Scott here and welcome to the first ever Fallout 4 build of hundreds more to come on Fudge Muppet. Today's build is super intelligent and loves to solve problems using scientific know-how. What this build lacks in physical brawn, she makes up for with technological edge and advanced power armor specialization. This build has a real mech feel to it and has the ability to use power armor for most of the game. This build also uses laser and plasma rifles for the majority of the game until it reaches its final form using rifles as secondary longer range weapons with a Gatling laser as its primary combat solution. This build is also about getting as much XP as possible to level as fast as possible. Because of this, the scientist makes an awesome character for anyone aiming for a completionist playthrough. Like many intelligence focused characters, it is harder to play in the beginning but has a massive payoff as you get further in the game. I also want to mention now that this build reaches 20 intelligence at its full potential at night using Mentats. Growing up in Boston, the scientist was never actually a scientist. As a child, the girl was quite awkward, however, she was incredibly intelligent. She had the brains of a smart 12 year old when she was only just starting school. While very academic, the scientist was quite awkward and often mentally challenged by social constructs. She was ever slightly on the autism spectrum, but still managed to function normally in most situations. The scientist was always kind to others, however, wouldn't sugarcoat situations to those who needed to be told the necessary truth. As she went through her high school years, the scientist developed a keen interest in chemistry and physics and found law an enjoyable subject too. It was here she met her future husband, Nate, who was a member of the high school athletics team. No one expected such an awkward girl would end up with Nate, however, he took an interest in her and she was happy to let him make the moves until she became completely comfortable in their relationship. As time went by and high school finished, Nate and the scientist fell in love and married early. The scientist was on the fence about what career she would now follow, but was encouraged to pursue a career in the legal system by her family. They agreed to pay for her education if she decided to study law, and this is the path she ended up taking. While the scientist did have a massive interest in science and technology, she decided she would have to explore science using books in her spare time. After spending two years at the Suffolk County School of Law, Nate was enlisted within his military career and during this time away from his wife, the scientist finishes her degree and works as a lawyer for a year. During Nate's time away in the military, he did visit his wife as frequently as possible. After one year as a lawyer, Nate arrives home for some quality time over Christmas and Sean is conceived. The two find out that the scientist is pregnant and because of this, she quits her job to prepare the home. Nate unfortunately had to go back to the military but returns during during August to be with his wife. After giving birth in September, life is wonderful and new until the fateful day of October 23rd. We all know what happens now, and after escaping the damage of the bomb and leaving Vault 111, the scientist begins looking for what is left of her family, her son. Now before we get into the faction choices this build will make, we do have to issue a standard spoiler warning. We're going to keep faction and big quest storylines super vague, however we will be explaining what factions this build will be joining and when. If you are unaware of all the joinable factions to work with in the main storyline, then be warned because this build does side with a faction which is not accessible until later in the story. Now that's done, it's time to talk about faction choices in the wasteland. Fleeing from Vault 111 and searching for her son, the scientist will eventually come across the Minutemen and a Brotherhood of Steel distress signal. With the Minutemen being the only civilization she has met in the wasteland and because they don't seem like they are able to help her, she follows her curiosity to the Brotherhood of Steel and after helping them will join their ranks. The scientist believes that the Brotherhood of Steel would have the resources to help her find her son and of course is very intrigued by their technological assets. If you put yourself in her shoes, she has no idea of exactly who the Brotherhood of Steel are, but she feels much safer siding with these seemingly nice people who have the resources to keep her safe and search for Sean. Especially now that it seems law has become a loose and flimsy concept, science becomes the overriding focus of her skill set. She craves to learn what she can to find her son and also expand her knowledge, a goal that has been consistent with her for as long as she can remember. The scientist will use her incredible pre-war knowledge of science she acquired from reading and studying and apply it to what she observes within the post-apocalyptic Boston. While the scientist scientist understands the dangers of technology to humankind, she views it as something that has serious potential to fix humanity as well. She keeps her views hidden however and works with the Brotherhood for their resources. She definitely doesn't hate those who have helped her to survive for her early days in the Commonwealth. That said however, the scientist eventually discovers the Institute and is incredibly impressed. She believes that they have the potential to achieve a scientific utopia for humanity where all problems can be solved with science and technology. If the Institute was able to advance enough, people would finally 
finally be able to flourish in peace. As the scientist continues to explore the Brotherhood of Steel, she will also become exposed to increasing amounts of their more radical perspectives. And because of this, she will side with the Institute, a group that fulfills her desires scientifically and emotionally. At the start of the game, the scientist will begin with the following special stats. Three strength, five perception, three endurance, one charisma, 10 intelligence, two agility, and four luck. At the start of the game, you'll want to get the special book in Sanctuary to allocate a special point, and we'll be putting this into luck. You'll also be getting the perception bobblehead in the first hour or so of the game, and together this will leave you with six perception and five luck. If you don't know where the special book is or where the perception bobblehead is, we'll leave links in the description to our guides we made on where to find them. You will also want to get the intelligence bobblehead as fast as you can, so you can have 11 intelligence to get the most out of your leveling. A guide on this can also be found in the description. We're picking three strength to have access to armor early on and stay protected, and of course, extra carry weight is always nice. Five Perception has been chosen so that we can quickly get the Perception Bobblehead to unlock Night Person, and this also represents the observational nature of the build. Three Endurance is chosen so we have enough health to make survival not too much of a struggle, and one Charisma represents the social awkwardness of the scientist. Ten Intelligence, of course, represents the academic knowledge and learning capacity of this character, and will allow us to roleplay a scientist using science-related perks. It will also allow us to level as fast as possible. Two Agility is there to simply represent the lack of agility that the scientist has at the start of the game, but more importantly, it leaves us with enough points to have four luck and then get the idiot savant perk using the special book in Sanctuary. This perk represents the tiny autistic streak of this build, or you could just ignore the role-playing aspect of this perk altogether. Now for some super important stuff. Let's go over every single perk point this character will allocate all the way up to level 50, or 51 really in this case. We've decided to mainly explain perks up to level 50 for our Fallout 4 builds, and then anything beyond this will be up to you. So looking at the start of the game, this character is going to get Idiot Savant. This will allow us to have a random chance to get three times the amount of XP for doing something, and the more intelligence you have, the less chance there is for this to occur. At rank two, you'll be receiving five times as much XP. Anyways, while this might sound a little silly for this kind of character with super high intelligence, if you look at the math behind this perk, you've still got a 1.5% chance for Idiot Savant to occur. This means that this character will eventually get the Idiot Savant effect to occur, and when it does, you can potentially go up four to five levels if it happened while handing in a quest. The perk points that this will give you more than makes up for the perk points that this perk cost us. And with no level cap, it's definitely a good perk to have for a completionist build. When I played this build, the Idiot Savant effect happened for me on the first ever Preston Garvey quest. Keep in mind that you'll get this perk effect more than a few times in the game, as there are many quests to complete and many powerful enemies to kill. Following Idiot Savant, we are getting Night Person, and this is going to allow us to have two more intelligence and two more perception during the hours of 6pm to 6am. This makes night time the best time to turn in quests, as you will receive even more XP, because your intelligence will be higher. Later on, this will add three points to intelligence and perception at night. You will next get the Nerd Rage perk, and this is the ultimate safety net for this build. Nerd Rage makes time slow down, and gives you 20 more damage resistance, and makes you cause 20% more damage while the effect lasts. For the effect to activate, your character needs to drop below 20% health, and this is why the perk is the ultimate safety net, because it ensures you kick ass when the battle gets hard. Following Nerd Rage, we're getting armor so we can upgrade our normal armor and power armor early on in the game, and this will help us stay alive. We are then getting the hacker perk so we can hack advanced terminals, and then the scrounger perk so we can find more ammo. This character will be using rarer and more expensive ammo types later on in the game, such as plasma cartridges, and therefore scrounger will be essential, as we only have one charisma and buying ammo is not efficient. Next up, we have a favorite perk of mine, Nuclear Physicist, and this makes you do 50% more radiation damage, and more importantly, makes fusion cores last 25% longer. This is an awesome perk for this build because we want to be using power armor all the time, and power armor, of course, runs on fusion cores. Radiation damage won't really be used by this character, but if you want to, then go ahead. Rank two of this perk is going to make rad weapons do double damage and make fusion cores last 50% longer. And and once we get the final rank, fusion cores will last twice as long and can be ejected using the grenade button to cause a massive explosion. If you want to know more about this perk and how to use it, be sure to watch our Nuclear Physicist Is It Worth It video, which will be in the description. Next up, we get the Medic perk, which makes us regenerate 40% of our health with stim packs and remove 40% of max radiation using Radaway. Finally, we're getting rank two of Hacker to be able to unlock expert terminals, and now we're at level 10. 
During this period, try to get as many bobbleheads as you can, and remember that all the special bobblehead location guides can be found in the description. Following this, we're getting the second rank of Idiot Savant for the chance to have five times as much XP. The first rank of science is to get access to basic science mods, and then the second rank of armorer to make even better standard armor and power armor. We're then getting the second rank of nuclear physicist to make our fusion cores last 50% longer, and the first rank of chemist to make chems last 50% longer. Then we get the second rank of chemist to make chems last twice as long, and as you'd assume, this character will be using chems to get a massive advantage. We recommend using mentats before handing in quests to boost your intelligence even higher. Next, we get the first rank of chem resistant, and this makes us 50% less likely to get addicted to chems, which provides us with a little bit of addiction buffer because we will be taking a lot of chems. We can simply take a dick doll for the times we do get addicted. Following this, we're getting the second rank of science, and then the first rank of rifleman, and then the second rank of rifleman. By this time, you are level 20, and your non-automatic rifles do 40% more damage and ignore 15% of your target's armor. If you haven't got all the special bobbleheads by now, keep looking and do your best to get them. Remember, guides in the description. Next up, we're getting the third rank of hacker to access master terminals, and we didn't think the fourth rank was very necessary at all. Next up, we're getting rifleman rank three and scrounger rank two, and then scrounger rank three. With three ranks of scrounger, you will find heaps more ammunition around the wasteland to power your guns. We're then getting the second rank of night person to have plus three intelligence and perception at night time, and also night vision while we're sneaking. Next up, we get the third rank of nuclear physicist to make fusion cores last twice as long and be able to eject them as bombs. And when we're getting the third rank of armor, we can also make our power armor even better. We're then getting the third rank of science to improve our gear and power armor even further, and then the second rank of medic so that stim packs and right away become even more effective. This is fantastic for staying alive and getting the most out of your aid. We're then advancing to level 30 and we're actually saving the perk point gained at this level. You should also have all the special bobbleheads by now and your current stats should be four strength, six perception, four endurance, two charisma, 11 intelligence, three agility, and six luck. Next up onto level 31, we are going to have two points to spend and we're going with rifleman rank four and the second rank of nerd rage. Now your automatic rifles will do 80% more damage and ignore 25% of your target's armor and have a small chance to cripple enemy limbs. Nerd rage two will slow time and make you deal 30% more damage and have plus 30 damage resistance. We're then getting the third rank of chemist to make chems last 150% longer and then the first rank of Scrapper. Scrapper allows us to scrap weapons for crafting materials, and following this, we will be getting the second rank, which allows us to get rarer materials and also highlight components we are looking for. For the next three levels, we will be dumping special points into agility to bring it up to six. And this is, of course, useful for AP and more VATS action with a decent amount of luck. But very importantly, it's going to make us much more maneuverable and be able to fly for longer when we get our jetpack. We're then getting the fourth rank of Scrounger to find even more ammo, and then the fourth rank of Armorer to have access to all the best armor mods that don't need the fourth rank of Science. We will then get the first rank of Action Boy to get 25% faster action point regen, and this is great for general use, but then again, also great for our jetpack. At level 41, we are getting the fourth rank of Science, meaning we can use this with Armorer to create awesome power armor, and of course, the jetpack. We're then getting the second rank of Action Boy for 50% more AP regen, generation, and now we've given our slow power armor character some more maneuverability to make our mechanical tank a complete monster in combat. Following this, we're going to be investing a perk point into strength to get five strength, and this will give us access to heavy gunner, which we will get next. This will make heavy weapons do more damage, and we're getting the fourth rank of chemist to make chems last 200% longer, and then the second rank of heavy gunner, then the third, then the fourth, and then the fifth. After five ranks of Heavy Gunner, this character will be able to use a Gatling laser and make it do double damage, have a chance to stagger your opponent, and you'll also have increased hip fire accuracy. Rifles will now become secondary long range weapons that are of course still extremely useful, and heavy weapons will become the choice for the harder, more intense battles. Following this, we're getting the final Nerd Rage perk at level 50, and you can get the last rank of Rifleman at level 51 just to round it all out. This makes you ignore 30% of the target's armor and do double damage, and you'll also have a slightly higher chance of crippling an enemy's limb. The final rank of Nerd Rage is going to give the scientist 40 more damage resistance, 40% more damage, and kills you make while enraged will restore some lost health. Remember, this also occurs while time is slowed, but only happens when your health falls below 20%.
Looking at your endgame special stats without gear, they're going to be 5 Strength, 6 Perception, 4 Endurance, 2 Charisma, 11 Intelligence, 6 Agility, and 6 Luck. Now you know how to build the Scientist, it's time to take a look at the gear. Gear is going to be explained as early game, mid game, and end game, and this more so refers to the level rather than story progress. Also, while this character will be using scientific outfits like lab coats, she will also carry some armor sets created with armor if she finds that she needs protection and doesn't have access to power armor. At the start of the game, you're going to want to use any rifles that you can find. The laser musket is of course a great option as you get it so early, but eventually after helping Paladin dance in Cambridge Police Station, you're going to get the legendary laser rifle, Righteous Authority. This makes critical shots do double damage and makes the critical meter feel 15% faster. You'll use this as your main early game weapon, and any other rifles that you come across that you deem powerful. You might want to keep a pipe rifle around when your laser rifle is low on ammunition, however with the scrounger perks you should be able to rely completely on energy weapons. Remember to keep and utilize any grenades you find for extra firepower. You're also going to keep your vault suit and place leather armor over the top which you can upgrade with armor. This will help keep you alive in the earlier levels but you want to buy or find a lab coat as soon as possible. This gives you plus two intelligence but we recommend wearing the vault suit and armor when in dangerous situations and wear the lab coat when exploring places without enemies, walking around in friendly areas and turning in quests. In terms of power armor, you are obviously pigeonholed into using T45 at the start of the game, and you can upgrade this for better protection. If you want the Hot Rod Flames paint for the power armor, which will give you plus one agility, you can find it northeast of Sanctuary in the robotics disposal ground. You can decide what you want to put in the legs, but we recommend optimized servos to reduce the sprint cost and allow you to escape bullets quicker and discover locations faster. The torso piece upgrade is up to you, but one very important upgrade that we use for this build consistently is the internal database mod. This will give you plus two intelligence, so after we get the bobblehead, we'll be running around with 13 intelligence while in power armor, so we can maximize our kill and location XP. In terms of mid game gear, you're definitely going to have the T60 power armor by now from the Brotherhood of steel and again remember to upgrade this with the internal database mod as well. Go nuts on the customization here as much as you can and the same thing goes for paint. Interestingly enough now you can probably keep your vault suit and armor pieces with you as a backup however you should aspire to have enough fusion cores to never have to use standard armor again. Remember that nuclear physicist helps you conserve fusion cores majorly. You'll want to get the institute lab coat as soon as possible and this will give you plus two intelligence. This will be worn under your power armor however the effect of the lab coat doesn't apply while you're in armor. This however doesn't matter because of the internal database mod, so you can turn in quests inside or outside of your T60 gear. You'll also want to get a pair of groovy glasses called Liam's glasses by doing the Institute quest plugging a leak. And while these look super dorky with the Institute lab coat, you can just wear them for handing in quests. We recommend this because they add two more points to your intelligence. In terms of role playing, perhaps the scientist might think that the glasses look really fashionable. I mean, she's sort of socially inept, so she would have no idea. Using the lab coat with the glasses at night time with the night person perk and the intelligence bobblehead plus some mentats, the scientist is going to be able to turn in quests with 20 intelligence. This is going to give you insane amounts of XP and you can investigate crafting chems to take this even a bit further. If you happen to get the idiot savant effect while having 20 intelligence, the experience gain you will get will be absolutely ridiculous. In the best way possible, of course. In terms of weapons, you will want to keep an assault rifle in your inventory as a backup, and because you don't have gun nut, you're going to have to keep replacing this with better assault rifles that you find. Your main rifles will be Righteous Authority still because you will upgrade it, but also an absolute beast of a gun, the Plasma Sniper Rifle. And there's a little secret ingredient, however, which makes the Plasma Sniper so good, and this is the basic reflex sight. Instead of making this a super long range sniper, you can put the reflex sight on it and you use it how you would use any non-automatic rifle, but it has the damage of a sniper. This will be a main rifle of yours for the whole game, so go nuts on the upgrades using science to make it as powerful as possible. Looking at the end game gear, you're going to want to get the legendary Gatling laser called Final Judgment. You will get this towards the end of the scientist's main storyline. I won't spoil anything, but it's pretty hard to miss. Just be sure you loot any notable story enemies who happen to be using a Gatling laser. This Gatling laser has a 25% faster fire rate and a 15% faster reload than a normal Gatling laser. You're going to want to upgrade this with the following mods. The boosted gamma wave emitter for more burning damage, improved normal damage and increased range, and the laser 
is a charging barrel for better damage and range but inferior fire rate, but this is partially countered by Final Judgment's faster fire rate, but besides doing more damage, it's much better for conserving ammunition. You'll also want the beam focuser for better range, accuracy and recoil, and get the reflex sight too because it makes the gun easier to aim with. Alongside this, you'll still have your awesome plasma sniper rifle and your best assault rifle that you can find. You will still be wearing the Institute lab coat for your standard aesthetic, but let's talk about the power armor. So obviously we're going to get the jetpack and the entire set of X01 Mark VI power armor, and you want it to be Mark VI to maximize your resistances. X01 power armor can be found throughout the wasteland once you reach higher levels. The earliest anyone has found this that I'm aware of is level 28. I myself found it at level 44. You'll want the internal database mod on the helmet again and the optimized servos on the legs for reducing sprinting costs so you can waste less AP on sprinting and more on your jetpack for when you're doing sprinting launches. There's also two aesthetics for the scientist's X01 power armor. Firstly, we have the Institute paint, which gives you an intelligence bonus when all pieces are painted with it. And it looks absolutely awesome with the purple headlamp, which on the X01 armor is the color that the eyes light up. This aesthetic really fits in with the sciencey theme of the build, the very sterilized look. But the other aesthetic we recommend is the prism shielding paint for all your pieces that gives you the highest damage and energy resistance as possible, making you an absolute tank. We recommend the blue headlamp eyes for this aesthetic as we think it looks amazing and very very institute mech themed. Companions are very important for this build especially early on as they are there to help you when you're at your weakest. In terms of early companions the scientist is best fitted to use Codworth as he suits the techie themes of this build. Companions we also recommend who you can get later on include Curie and X688. Paladin Dance is also a good companion to get while you're still with the Brotherhood because after you max his affinity you will get the know your enemy perk. This will permanently give you 20% damage against ferals, super mutants, and synths. These are of course just what we recommend. You can pick whoever you like as long as it fits in with the choices and perspectives of the build. When it comes to settlements, the scientist isn't overly fussed about building them because she is very happy having a base within the pre-existing confines of the institute. That being said, if you do want to build settlements, go right ahead. We recommend quality over quantity. Try constructing one or just a few absolutely crazy cool settlements instead of just 20 settlements with two turrets and a water pump. And that wraps up this week's Fallout build, The Scientist. If you want more Fallout 4 builds like this, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of them. We will be making many in the future and for a long time. Leave a like if you did enjoy this awesome aesthetic of the X01 power armor and be sure to share this video around if you deem it worthy. Social media links are in the description for anyone who has questions or wants to get on a more personal level with us. My name is Scott. This was the Scientist Fallout 4 build. Subscribe and tune in for when I see you next time.